Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at a quick tip for simulation, which is how to use prescribed displacements. So most of the times we think of setting up an analysis in SOLIDWORKS simulation, we're talking about applying loads and figuring out what the resulting stresses are from, from those loads. However, based on your design criteria, sometimes we don't know the load up front, but we do know how far something needs to be able to deflect or how much of a displacement it needs to be able to resist. And in those situations, we can set up an analysis where rather than applying a load as our input, we'll apply a prescribed displacement. Now the simplest way to do this is right under the external loads folder in simulation, you can right click and access a prescribed displacement. Really what that does though is, is bring you over to the fixtures tab. It puts you into an advanced fixture called Use Reference Geometry, which would allow me to select the face I want to move, such as the circular face at the end of this bracket here. Choose a reference direction, such as a plane in my design here, so my top plane, and then choose a certain distance I want to translate it. So if I turn on one of these directions at zero, it's basically acting as a fixture. If I want to actually translate it, I can enter in a deflection, like one millimeter, and that means that it'll actually shift that end down one millimeter. I'll see the resulting stresses, and if I so desire, I'll also be able to plot out the reaction force at my fixture on the other end and see how much force was actually required to achieve that deflection. So with those settings applied, again, I already have a fixture created here on the back face. I can go ahead and run the study, and we'll see resulting stresses. We'll see also if we want to probe out the reaction force to find out how much force was actually applied, how much force did that actually take. I can right click on the results folder and list the result force. And then I just need to make the same selection as my fixture. So I can select on the back face there, choose update, and I'll see that green arrow representing my reaction force in the y direction. It's about six kilonewtons. So there's quite a lot of information we can get out of here using the prescribed displacement. One question I get from time to time is, if you go to a displacement plot, why don't the displacements line up exactly? We applied one millimeter of displacement, and we see here a resultant displacement of 1.06 millimeters. Well, basically, when we applied that displacement, we actually enforced it only on the faces we selected. So wherever we applied that reference geometry fixture, we said, all right, that entire face is going to move one millimeter. We didn't really make specifications about elsewhere on the design, so that may end up not actually being your maximum displacement. And then the other thing to note is that we specified it to move only in a certain direction, only in my global y direction, negative y. So to accurately interpret these plots, I should switch my displacement plot to also be in the y direction. So instead of plotting resultant displacement, plot displacement in the y direction. And we can see that the blue area has moved approximately negative one. And if I wanna be precise, I need to probe that particular region. So I'll go to my plot tools and probe. I can switch to on selected entities and probe that specific face and see that it's precisely one millimeter of deflection in the y direction. Now, this is all great if you want to apply a simple displacement in one direction, but what if I want to apply multiple displacements at once? For instance, translating a selection a certain amount and also rotating it a certain amount. This topic, as well as other considerations for prescribed displacements, will be discussed in a second video on advanced prescribed displacements.